race will be official even if we get a thunderstorm and we have to stop the action on track once we get to the end of this second stage. So that's another reason, as you said, why these guys are so aggressive. 29 laps to go, the 10 is out front. Wow, yep, there you got it. We got rain on the windshield, that's not good. Jeb Burton was fighting hard at the front. And because of that, it could pay off in a trip to victory lane now that we've got the rain. And we've just received word. Jeb Burton, first career win, comes at Talladega Super Speedway. For the first time in his Xfinity Series career, Jeb, what are the emotions like right now, man? Man, uh, I'm trying not to cry. Whew. These guys. They deserve to win. They hadn't won um, all year last year, and I was so close to last year. And to get in victory lane is awesome, but Nutrient Ag Solutions, without them, I wouldn't be here. And My first career Xfinity win, and at Talladega, no less. What a great way to start the week. And no better way to end it than a trip to Georgia to visit the Turner Family Farms, where peanut season is just getting underway. So you heard about how Brandy and I met. How, how did y'all meet? Instagram wasn't around back in the day. So. It was not We're not around. that old, Jeff. Come on, man. <laughs> Reed and my brother were friends. We kind of, we grew up in the same town and we always knew each other. And you you grew up on a farm too. I did, I did. So what, what kind of farming does your family do? Uh, my dad, he grows blueberries primarily. Um, he does corn and um, peanuts and cotton also, but mostly um, blueberries. He has about 400 acres of high bush and rabbit eye blueberries, so wow. keeps him pretty busy. Oh, yeah. And um, Garrison and Claire, if they decide to farm, they'll be the fifth generation farmer on both sides. So Pressure's on, but. <laughs> <laughs> so to start, y'all were growing tobacco and cotton. What prompted you all to get into the peanut industry? Well, the peanuts, you know, they've always been a a Georgia crop, but they've always been more or less in West Georgia, west side of the state. We're on the east side. We had quota owners that was on the west side, but on peanut quota, you know, it kind of limited who could grow them, where they could be grown, such as that. We're the east side, we had tobacco, you know, we hit on quota and you could only certain ones grow it if you own quota. But in 2002, I think, the peanut quota system was done away with and it opened up whoever wanted to grow could grow, however much you wanted to grow. And at that time, we were struggling. Our cotton yields it was not doing like they used to just because we weren't rotating with another crop to help let that soil rest for a year. So in 2004, we started growing peanuts, mainly just for rotation. We needed something else in our crop mix to, to help the other crops, you know. And What's the importance of the sustainability side for, for you all to continue the legacy that you all built here? I think it's very important. I mean, it's, it's, it's simple. You're not taking care of it. If I'm not taking care of my farm, you're not taking care of your crew or your car. I mean, it's, it's not gonna be there tomorrow. Things have changed a lot in the past 15 years, you know, 15, 20 years ago when I started. We were really working all over dirt, a lot of disking, a lot of plowing, you know, just constantly working it. But since then, we've, we've transitioned over to strip tillage, which for us in the south, it's as close as we can get to no-till because we're dealing with a hard pan. So we try to just, we do no more tillage than we absolutely have to to get the crop established and get it up. So fourth generation farmer, you've got a son. I do. So hopefully he'll take over the, right. the Turner Farms. That's it. So what does that mean to you? Well, I mean, it, it's, I guess you could say it's what keeps me going every day. I mean, you know, it's, I've seen what my dad, my grandpa's done, what, where it's come from, from then to now. You know, you've seen how hard they work, the stress, the worry. You know, you just wanna, I wanna take it and make it better for the next generation. So what have you learned growing up on the farm with your dad? Probably just work ethic and dedication, just whatever you do, do it to your fullest, 110%, and just that you have to make sacrifices sometimes. and. Just work hard, whatever you do. My dad, 
instilled that in me um, with racing and, and everything he does. So That's I right. respect I that. Mean, it ties into anything you're doing in life, in my opinion, not just agriculture or racing. I mean, if you're going to do it, do it right. Don't have to, don't just do enough to get by. Make it happen. Well, your daughter's been doing that too. She's winning the pageants and yeah. everything she's doing. So yeah. you have to be proud of her too. I am, absolutely. Proud of both of them. So okay. why don't you tell me a little bit more about your pageant? So I do, I've done pageants since I've been six years old and I won this big pageant it's across the whole United States and I beat over 450 four, girls. So yeah. That's Dang awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So Brandy used to do pageants too when she was coming up. I out. did. I um, stopped when I was in the third grade though. Softball became more of my life, I guess, and I grew into a tomboy. Now I'm a tomboy with this one hunting and <laughs> going all, all over the United States with him. So can you tell me a little bit more about your platform with Ag, ag Education? Okay, so my platform is um, like about the farm and what my dad grows. I do talk about my dad and um, his farming in my interview because it's a big part of me because like I live on a farm. Right. So I've got a question. So I'm a big peanut guy oh, yeah. and I love M&Ms. Absolutely. So what are the chances that this peanut and this M&M came from this farm? It's a very good possibility. I mean, uh, the, the co-op that we sell our peanuts to off the farm they have whole contracts with the candy company so it's a very good possibility it could have come from this farm or local farm close by we got something for y'all to try hold on let me go get oh, some blood peanuts what in the world <laughs> the best thing yeah how do you eat them you crack them with your teeth here i'll show you she'll yeah. show you yeah. let her show you why not just open it like that that takes the fun out of it. <laughs> and then you open it, and then, there's and then just go inside. for it. Yep. What you think, Jeb? Not bad. <laughs> a little different. <laughs> I'm going back for a second. Okay. All right. I'm that's a good sign. So I have a thing called driver introductions that I do every race. Normally we walk out on a stage. They call our name out. We're waving. What are some things that I could do that you do so I could get some more attention? So you walk, shoulders back, you turn, go up here, smile big, and wave. Okay, so let's walk. All right, we're walking. Shoulders back. Shoulders back. Turn. You didn't poke the hip out. Pose. Wave. <laughs> and then pose. And then you turn and walk back. Shoulders back. Shoulders back. <laughs> well, thanks again yes, for sir. spending some time with us, man. We've enjoyed it. it was Appreciate nice you meeting. come down to Little South Georgia Farm yes, sir. and spend some time with us. On board with Jeff Burton, most recent winner, as Jamie talked about earlier, running that throwback scheme to his father, Ward, who's here today. And the race off pit road goes to Jeff Burton. Two tires. Yeah, he got two tires, but he's one of those drivers that had pitted earlier, so a bit of a strategy play here. the first time ever, the NASCAR Xfinity Series is going green at Circuit of the Americas.